Welcome to Buyer Rail. The domed manway cover of a complete cover assembly may need to be replaced, or in some instances, painted or coated to meet the commodity requirements of the tank car. This video will show the steps required to separate the cover from the strong back on the single bolt manway. Whether the manway cover is new or previously installed on a tank car, the strong back and domed cover should always be treated as one complete cover assembly. In all cases, the complete cover assembly should be removed from the tank car and placed on a clean, flat working surface before any disassembly or reassembly processes start. This is critical to performing these operations without damaging the working components of a complete cover assembly. Likewise, before any work is performed, please take extra care to protect your critical sealing surfaces of your cover. It is always recommended to protect the cover's sealing surface with a manufacturer's provided protection jacket. This jacket should remain in place while moving, storing, or processing your buyer manway cover. This critical sealing surface should never be painted, and extra attention should be paid to prevent scratches, nicks, or gouges. All of these will affect the sealing performance of the manway and are not covered by the manufacturer's warranty. There are similar protection jackets to protect the critical sealing surfaces of the buyer manway nozzle. If you have questions about this, please contact your distributor to find out more. This video will show the manufacturer's suggested processes and should not replace any procedures or safety protocols in place at your facility. Please follow all safety guidelines and procedures in place at your facility. For instructions on the reassembly process, please jump ahead to the 8 minute mark. Shown here is the state of the cover assembly as it is shipped from the manufacturer. Please note that the lift assist spring and hinge components are zip tied to the strong back. Also, the protection jacket is in place on the critical sealing surface. Keep these items attached for safekeeping and to prevent loss or damage. To complete the disassembly, you'll need a 3 quarter inch square driver with a T-handle wrench, a 3 8 inch ratchet handle with an extension, a 9 16 inch open-ended wrench, the appropriate 9 16 inch deep socket, and a 3 16 inch hex driver or Allen wrench to work with your ratchet. You should also have a clean plastic bag available to store greasy items and a box to keep all loose parts together. Please follow all safety guidelines and procedures in place at your facility. The cover assembly should be removed from the tank car and placed on a clean, flat working surface prior to completing these steps. To start the process, use three 4x4 wood blocks to support the cover assembly while laying flat on a work surface. The height of the blocks should provide the strong back with enough space to allow adequate clearance from the work surface. Place the three blocks on your work surface and lower the cover assembly down so it rests on the hinge arms. Position the blocks so that one is between the hinge arms and the other two are at other points around the cover. Lower the assembly so that the round cover is resting on the blocks. There should be sufficient clearance so that the strong back is not supporting the assembly and it can move freely without the blocks or surface interfering with its rotation. The next step is to remove the cap assembly from the cover assembly. There are four hex drive flathead screws holding the cap in place that accept the 3 16 hex driver socket or Allen wrench. These screws have been installed with Loctite, so carefully break the Loctite hold on all screws before removing them. Using an impact wrench is not recommended with this type of screw to prevent damaging the hex key of the screw. Remove all screws and lift off the cap assembly. Set the cap and screws aside. Next, adjust the lift assist spring so that it will not be in the way. Be sure to remove the spring arms from the retainer clips on the cover. Keep the spring attached with the zip tie to the strong back so that the parts do not get lost while the cover is removed. Pull the T-handle locking pin and rotate the strong back clockwise so that the arm of the strong back and pin are no longer captured by the flange on the cover. Using the 3 quarter inch square driver extension and T-handle driver, Insert the tool into the receiver on the ram. The ram has a counter-rotating thread. Spin the ram clockwise to loosen the thread. The strong back will start to rise away from the cover. You can use an impact wrench to speed up this process, but continually check to ensure that the strong back is not interfering with any of the flanges on the cover or any other components. The ram should move smoothly and without resistance. 
The three quarter inch extension will extend the reach of the driver past the point where the strong back rises above the ram. After about 20 rotations of the ram, the cover will stop rising on the thread. Notice that the strong back will skip off the last thread and fall back making a slight thud sound. <laughs> Stop the clockwise rotation just past this point to avoid any thread interference. Remove the T-handle wrench and the O-ring. The strong back weighs over 100 pounds. Safely lift the strong back straight up from the ram. If the strong back fails to release, use the T-handle wrench to back off the ram and complete another clockwise rotation just beyond the point where the threads skip. Once free, place the strong back down on a clean workspace nearby. As with all components on the cover assembly, it is important to keep the threads on the strong back clear of dirt and debris. Place a shop rag in the threads to keep material out. Take other appropriate precautions based on your specific working and storage environment. Next, remove the ram and second o-ring from the cover. Again, remove the six hex drive flathead screws holding the retainer ring in place. These screws have been installed with Loctite, so carefully break the Loctite hold on all screws before removing them. Remove all screws completely and put the screws aside for now. Remove the RAM retainer and the O-ring and place all components aside. Carefully remove the threaded RAM and store in the clean plastic bag and keep it sealed. It is critical to keep the threaded components clean from dirt and debris while the cover is disassembled. Any damage or contamination of these fine threads will impact the cover's assembly's performance and longevity. Finally, using a 9 16 inch socket and wrench, remove the nylock nut from the bolt holding the safety hook arm in place. Remove the nut, bolt, and steel hook and set aside for now. The disassembly process is now complete. The disassembled parts should include a small O-ring, 10 5 16 18 by 7 8 inch hex drive flathead screws, a single 3 8 inch by 3 inch bolt, and 3 8 inch nylock nut, the safety hook, the threaded ram, the larger o ring, the ram retainer, and the locking cap assembly as parts. Store all parts together with the strong back and lift assist spring. The cover is now ready for painting or coating. It should be noted that there is a rubber protection jacket over the critical sealing surfaces. It is strongly recommended that you leave this rubber jacket in place while transporting and storing the cover as it protects the critical sealing surfaces from damage. This sealing surface should never be painted or coated. Accidental damage or paint interference on the sealing surface is not covered under warranty. After painting or coating, the protection jacket should be replaced as soon as possible and not removed again until the complete cover assembly is installed on the manway nozzle on the tank car. The next step is to reassemble the cover and strong back into the complete manway cover assembly. The following tools are required to complete this job. A 3 quarter inch square driver extension with T-handle adapter, a 3 8 inch ratchet with an extension, a 9 16 inch deep socket and 3 16 inch hex driver or allen wrench to work with your ratchet, a 9 16 inch open wrench or crescent wrench, a torque wrench capable of reading measurements in foot pounds, Loctite 242 seen here in individual packaging, Buyer Rail uses Shell Gaddis S2 V100 2 grease or Kluber All Temp Q NB50 grease. Have some spare grease available in a cup and a brush or other applicator to preload the threads for initial fit and assembly. A grease gun loaded with the recommended grease, some shop rags, heavy duty work gloves, and paper towels as needed. Please follow all safety guidelines and procedures in place at your facility. The cover assembly should be removed from the tank car and placed on a clean, flat working surface prior to completing these steps. Place the cover on a clean work surface supported by three 4x4 wood blocks. Start by cleaning and reapplying grease to the ram cup. Using the shop rags, be sure to remove any old grease that was left from the disassembly process. It is critical to make sure this sealing surface is perfectly clean and that the bolt holes are free of grease and debris. 
which may have been picked up while the cover was being painted, processed, or disassembled. Apply a liberal amount of grease to the ram cup. Be sure not to get the grease into the bolt holes. Locate the threaded ram, which should have been stored inside a clean plastic bag. Remove it from the bag and inspect its condition. If there is any debris, thoroughly clean with solvents or degreaser to be sure no grit is in the thread. Once the ram has been inspected or cleaned, place the rounded head of the ram into the cup on the cover. At this point, if any excess grease bulges out, be sure to clear the lower circumference to prevent it from getting into the bolt holes. Apply new grease to all threads on the ram. Be sure to liberally apply grease to the top threads so that the grease will carry from the lead-in as the strong back is re-threaded on. Next, reinstall the larger of the two O-rings. Wipe any existing grease from the O-ring and be sure to inspect the O-ring for any damaged nicks or splits. Place the O-ring over the ram and let it settle into the notch around the cover plate. It should settle in easily. Place the ram retainer over the ram with the countersunk holes on the top side of the ring. Line up the holes and locate six of the hex drive flathead screws. Each of these screws will need to be reinstalled with Loctite 242. Apply a liberal dollop to the threads of each screw and install. Tighten each screw until they are just starting to engage. The ram retainer ring will slightly compress the O-ring, so it's important that as you start to tighten each screw, you move to the screw on the opposite side in a star pattern, instead of going around. Once all screws are snugly tightened, use a torque wrench to fully tighten each screw to 12 to 15 foot-pounds. Again, proceeding in a star pattern for each of the six screws. Next, locate the safety hook, the 3 8 inch bolt, and nylock nut. Place the safety hook in the flange on the top side of the cover. The hook should be facing down. Align the holes and insert the bolt and start the nut onto the thread. Using a 9 16 inch socket and open-ended wrench, tighten the nylock nut on the bolt. Engage until just snug. There is no need to over-tighten or torque this nut. The safety hook should move freely at the hinge point. Next, locate the strong back and remove the rag that was protecting the threads. Inspect the threads for any damage or debris. Like the ram, if any debris is found, please take extra steps to thoroughly clean the threads. The strong back weighs over 100 pounds. Safely lift the strong back up and slowly put in place on the cover, with the ram centered in the hole. It is critical not to let the ram damage the threads on the strong back. Lower it slowly. It is important to ensure the proper orientation of the strong back to the cover at this time. The loop handle on the strong back should be facing away from the hinge flanges as it drops into place between the cover locking flange and the stop point on the cover. Any other orientation will prohibit later assembly of the cover onto the tank car nozzle. The T-handle must be in place to the left of the flange with a hole in it. There is a stop preventing the strong back from moving any further clockwise. With the 3 quarter inch square driver extension back in the central ram, it is important to get the thread started properly. Do not use an impact wrench for this process. The 3 quarter inch extension will extend the reach of the square driver into the recess created by the strong back sitting above the ram. Start by rotating the ram clockwise, effectively loosening the cover. Do this until you feel or hear the strong back fall off the last thread of the ram. <laughs> As with the disassembly process, there will be an audible thud. Immediately after this point, start to re-engage the thread by turning the ram counterclockwise. The thread should easily engage. If there is any resistance or increasing tightness, stop and start this process over again. The ram will move with only slight resistance of the thread. The strong back will move but will quickly bump into the cover, preventing its free rotation. Continue to tighten down the strong back. If you feel any abnormal resistance during this process, stop and inspect all components. Be sure that as the strong back is lowering, it is not pinching or interfering with any of the cover parts or the blocks on the work surface. The ram should rotate smoothly until the threads have completely bottomed out. With the strong back in place and fully seated, 
start to reapply the smaller o-ring and cap assembly. Locate the smaller o-ring, clean it and inspect it for damage before placing it on top of the ram. The o-ring should fully seat into the depression on the strong back with the ram in the center. Collect the cap assembly and check that its orientation when closed has the cap handle and locking pin pointing towards the handle on the strong back. Align the cap, center it on the ram, then open the cap to line up the holes for the screws. Using the four remaining hex drive flathead screws, apply a dollop of Loctite to each screw and start them in the threads. Using the 3 16 inch hex driver to set each screw until snug. Do not over tighten. The cap assembly will compress the smaller o-ring, so tighten the screws in a star pattern to create even pressure on the seal. These screws should be tightened to 12 to 15 foot-pounds and checked with a torque wrench. Using a standard pump grease gun and the Fire Rail approved Shell Gaddis S2 V100 2 grease or Kluber All Temp QNB 50 grease, Locate the Zerk fitting located at the bottom of the square receiver in the central ram. Apply the grease gun to the Zerk fitting. Add four to six pumps of grease into the ram. This should load the primary moving parts with enough grease until the next service interval after installation. After loading with grease, fully cycle the ram two times to its top and bottom position to ensure that the grease is fully distributed across the threads. Stop when the top of the ram is in line with the surface of the cap. This is its highest recommended position. Lowering the ram until the ram just starts to tighten. You can use an impact wrench to speed up the process, but be sure to check for interference of the strong back arms in the cover. Repeat this process for a second time to ensure a full distribution of grease. There is a grease breathe hole on the top of the strong back cover by the cap assembly. Some excess grease inside the system may squeeze through this hole. If you see grease being dispensed from this hole during the cycling process, simply wipe away any excess grease with a rag or paper towel. Once you have reached the bottom for the second time, release the ram with one full clockwise rotation. Next, rotate the strong back into its locked and ready position. Release the T-handle and rotate the strong back counterclockwise so that it is aligned with the flange on the cover. With the T-handle released, the pin should fall into place in the hole on the cover flange, preventing the strong backs from rotation. The lift assist spring can be adjusted so that the arms are laying back on the cover. The reassembly process is now complete. The cover is ready to be installed with the Manway nozzle on the tank car. For more information on that process, please see our video titled Buyer Single Bolt Manway Cover Installation, which is available on our website under the Videos section. In addition to this video, please thoroughly review and follow the instructions in the Installation, Maintenance, and Operations Manual for the Buyer Rail Single Bolt Manway located within the Documents section of the Buyer Rail website at www.buyerrail.com documents. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube for any updates. Visit www.buyerrail.com for ways to contact us with questions.